Welcome to the studio of the WSIS Plus 20 Forum High Level Event here in Geneva. I'm delighted to say I'm joined today by His Excellency Dr. Bosan Tijani, who's from the Federal Ministry of Communication, Innovation and Digital Economy of Nigeria. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good to be here. We're going to talk uh, in Nigeria and uh, digital. How is Nigeria, tell me, addressing challenges of connecting the large population and the land, large land mass of Nigeria? Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic question. Uh, as you know, we are indeed a very large, large country. Uh, in terms of population, if you focus on the real people, uh, we're about 250 million uh, people, uh, mostly young people. 60% uh, of that population is under the age of uh, 25. Uh, which means by naturally these are digital natives uh, who are conversant with digital technologies. They want to be part of the global economy. They want to use all the exciting technologies that are available to them. I think historically the government has invested uh, quite significantly uh, in digital infrastructure uh, in ensuring that we can actually provide connectivity and telecommunication services to our people. Nigeria is the largest uh, telecommunications market in, in Africa, not just because of the population, but also by the size of investment that has gone into the sector. Uh, but sadly, uh, we, uh, to truly reach our people, regardless of where they find themselves in the country, we must invest in 120,000 kilometers of fiber optic uh, network. As a nation, we've done really well. We have eight submarine cables uh, on the shores of the country, which means we do have capacity. But because of the last mile investment, we're only able to use 10% of the capacity that those uh, submarine cables carry. So now we're aggressively going towards uh, putting $2 billion into completing the deployment. So we've, we've invested in about 30, 40,000 uh, kilometers of fiber optic cable, if you look at some metros and backbone as well. But for us to truly complete where we need to be, uh, the government is now investing in 90,000 kilometers of fiber optic uh, cable. We're also the only country in West Africa which is on satellite, which has the capability to also beam internet to difficult to reach uh, locations. So government is now repurposing the use of that satellite to ensure that we can reach more people. Uh, we're the first market for uh, Starlink uh, in, uh, in, in Africa again. So Starlink is also helping to break that gap. Amazon Kuiper, which is another satellite, is also piloting for the first time anywhere in the world in Nigeria, just so that we can reach our people. But what we're doing as well is understanding that investing in the backbone is not enough. You have to drive consumption. Uh, we do have over 200,000 government institutions, whether you're talking about primary schools, secondary schools, healthcare centers, that we must connect. And typically some of these institutions are, have not been connected. So we've also set up what we call the Broadband Alliance to look for business models, to work with uh, governments, whether what you may call municipality level or at the local government level, to help them understand how to fund connectivity uh, to these uh, important institutions. So we're very hopeful uh, that in the next three to four years, uh, the Nigeria will be one of those well-connected nations and we can truly then open up our people uh, to significant opportunities and also grow our economy as well. There's a huge amount of promise there, it as is, you it say. Is. What's being done to close the uh, technical skills gap so that Nigeria can participate and even lead the development um, of these emerging technologies? Important, important aspect, even as we invest in the backbone, it is important that the people can actually take advantage of it. So two things that we've recognized is one, we must raise the level of digital literacy. So we've set an ambitious target for ourselves to ensure that 70% of our people in the next three years are digitally literate. So we're rolling out uh, programs where we're exposing people to basic knowledge of how to operate in a digital world, how to uh, effectively use the internet, how to protect yourself online, how to do business online. And, and that's something we're extremely excited about. But also uh, we've launched last year what we consider to be the largest technology talent accelerator in the world, where we're training 3 million technical talents. A lot of the young people are now learning cybersecurity, uh, both software development, front and back end, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and a lot of the skill sets that you now find to be in high demand uh, globally. As you know, most of the developed world uh, countries are aging population, not giving birth to, uh, to kids. So the population is actually shrinking 
in, in uh, most part of the world, which means there's a massive gap in supply of technology talent. So Nigeria would like to groom this talent for home uh, uh, applications where they can work for local companies, but also perhaps offer opportunities for companies globally to outsource some of their work. Uh, to our people. Just something India has done effectively well. We believe that Nigeria can also power the technology workforce of the future uh, through this program that we're running, which is called it, uh, we've called the 3 million technical talent uh, program. Okay, mm. that's a lot of work to be done. Mm. Uh, Nigeria is driving digital transformation. Tell us about, in particular, digital public infrastructure uh, mm. and rebuilding trust in governments. Yeah. I think what we've seen globally, not just in Nigeria, is that uh, the trust between citizens and governments is being eroded uh, significantly. People don't trust their government anymore. They want more from their leaders. Misinformation, disinformation is also uh, causing a lot of pain for society. And we do see the opportunity to truly uh, break that gap, regain some trust by meeting people at the point of their needs. Uh, people have significant activities that they carry out with their government in what you may call life events, whether when you give birth to a child or when you get married, when you start a new business, when you go to university. All those different points you interact with your government. And what you expect is a government that can meet your needs when you need them. And historically in Nigeria, we've actually invested in the use of technology in government, but sadly it's been done in silos. So not as a whole of government approach. So a lot of the applications that we see sits in different pockets within uh, different ministries and de departments and agencies. And if these solutions are not speaking to one another, then it doesn't really empower government to be a lot more e effective, to be uh, nimble, also to be able to deliver services uh, in a very cost-effective manner. So what we're now working on is building what we call the data exchange, which facilitates interoperability within government, allowing different uh, agencies and departments to be able to seamlessly share data without doing anything as they collect the data. They can speak to one another and data can be shared. And by being able to share data, we can better deliver services to our citizens. Once the data has been collected once, there's no need for any government agency to collect it because you can pull it within the system, which makes it faster for you to deliver services to the people. And you know, that way people benefit from uh, the use of technology in government. So we're changing the approach uh, from a silent approach to a whole of government approach that we hope will help us meet the needs of our people. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jijani, thank you so much for your My time. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you for all the points that you've thank made. You, and if you'd like to hear that conversation and others, you can do on the channel for the WISIS Plus 20 Forum High Level Event.